Greetings everyone, I'm Stefan and today we're going to be taking a look at the new origin introduced in Stellaris 3.1, the Clone Army. But first I would like to thank Paradox Interactive for sponsoring this video and for giving me early access to play around with this origin. I've been able to experiment and come up with this awesome build to show you guys today. If you do want to play with the Clone Army origin yourself, it is going to be part of the Humanoids Species Pack, uh, which fortunately is on sale until the 20th of September. Uh, the game is going to be free to play as well until that time, so if you have friends that haven't checked out Stellaris yet, do let them know. But anyways, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all the mechanics associated with the Clone Army Origin, as well as the first 30 years of gameplay using this build. I hope to show you guys just how powerful Clone Armies can be. First, let's start off with the basics of what Clone Army actually does for you. You get a bit of a trade-off. On the one hand, you get great bonuses to your population and your admirals, and also get some pretty hefty op assembly on your planets. On the other hand, you're completely reliant on ancient clone vat buildings for your growth. Now that doesn't seem so bad considering how each of these buildings give you plus 7 assembly, but you can only have 5 of these buildings in your entire empire. On top of that, these buildings aren't unlimited growth. You can only sustain 20 pops with these buildings, and you can't grow any more than 20. Which means that at your peak, your empire is going to have upwards of 100 clone pops. Now, of course, there are ways around it. On the one hand, you can just go ahead and conquer another empire and just make their species grow and work for you. On the other hand, you can go with an event chain and modify your species to actually be able to reproduce in exchange for abandoning the clone vats and losing some of the bonuses. We'll be exploring the event chain in the gameplay portion of this video, but for now, let's take a look at what this build does to make clone armies absolutely amazing. I present to you Fungus Amogus, the military rush build. With this build, your objective is to go and conquer another empire around 20 to 30 years in. With clone armies, your peak of power is about 30 to 40 years into the game, and so you really gotta take advantage of that and go out and conquer. For that purpose, I've chosen to go with the fanatic militarist ethic. I normally don't choose this one because it's pure military bonuses, but considering how this empire is all about military bonuses, it fits right in. With this, you get plus 20% to fire rate, as well as minus 20% to claim influence cost. Early on, you're not going to have a lot of influence to spare, and so reducing the cost for claiming is very important for making sure you can actually expand your territory. For our other ethic, we're going with Spiritualist. Now, you wouldn't normally go with Spiritualism for our rush build, however, it does give us some pretty hefty advantages. First of all, Spiritualist is going to give us access to Priests. Priests produce both amenities and unity, and uh, considering how our population grows extremely quickly, both of those are going to be a problem. To make sure we can complete traditions very quickly, and also sustain our population with amenities, priests are the way to go. Otherwise, Spiritualist really increases the chances of Psionic Theory to appear in your tech tree. Psionic Theory is necessary for the Psionic Ascension Path, and considering how we're genetically perfect clones already, we can't really use Genetic Ascension, and since we don't really want to transform into robots because, well, we lose all the bonuses, we don't really want to go for Synthetic Ascension. That leaves Psionic Ascension as the best option, and for a rush build, it's a pretty good option. You get some pretty good bonuses from the Shroud, as well as extra happiness and stuff like that. Speaking of happiness, we're going to be stacking that in this build. We're actually going to be running Pleasure Seekers with this Empire. Pleasure Seekers is a new civic added in 3.1, also part of the Humanoids Species Pack. This civic is quite amazing, and let me show you why. Let's go into the game, and let's just take a look at our stability. On our home planet, we get a base of 71. Without it, our stability starts at 62. Yeah, with a single civic, you get plus 9 stability across all your planets. How this is done is via a species right. Instead of decent conditions, you get access to decadent conditions. And decadent conditions gives you plus 20% bonuses to all of your strata, in exchange for a minor plus 10% to pop consumer goods upkeep. This consumer goods upkeep is only a tiny bit higher than the decent conditions one, and considering how extra stability increases your resource output, you actually get the same amount of consumer goods output overall using both decent conditions and decadent conditions, because your pops simply produce more. A happier population is also nice for any conquered populations, and also to avoid spamming enforcers. Normally, at 40 pops, you really do need an enforcer on your planet, but when they're all happy, you don't, so that's 
one free job right there. The other bonuses of Player Seekers aren't that great. You get plus 1% uh, pop growth from Entertainers, which is a joke and doesn't even apply to clone armies. And you also get plus 5 amenities from Servants, which can come in handy, but is generally applied to a species you just conquered. Otherwise, we're going with Functional Architecture. Functional Architecture is an absolutely amazing civic. In fact, I would call this one of the best civics in the game right now. It gives you minus 50% to building and district cost, which can be useful considering how ancient clone bats are expensive, and it also gives you plus two building slots now instead of one. Plus two building slots means a lot more science labs and a lot more specialist buildings. That increases your output and is really, really good for your empire. As far as our traits go, we are of course running clone armies, so we get the clone soldier trait. We get plus 50% to governing ethics attraction, which can be handy for appeasing faction and keeping your stability high. In addition, you also get plus 50% to army damage, which can be nice, you do save quite a bit of minerals when building armies, uh, but generally it is not the most important of statistics. In exchange, you have to bear with minus 40 years leader lifespan. That sounds horrible, but it actually isn't as bad in game. You see, clones start out fully formed, and so their leaders start out at about 10 years of age. So instead of a minus 40 to leader lifespan, you're really going to experience a minus 10, maybe minus 15 leader lifespan, which is bearable and not that bad. Interestingly enough, this trait actually changes depending on how you go with your clone army event chain. You can either get a less severe form of this trait and make your pops able to reproduce, or you can go for a very busted version of this trait, uh, which I will show on screen. Yeah, plus 25% specialist output and all those other bonuses. It's crazy, and that is the one that we're going to be gunning for with this empire. As far as our other trades go, we're going with a more or less regular setup. Intelligent Natural Engineers really helps out with science production, which uh, is always nice to have, and Ingenious is really great because energy is the best resource to produce. As far as our negative traits, we go with Unruly and Solitary because these are basically free picks. Now that we've covered the build, let's get into some gameplay, shall we? Alright, first thing that we're going to want to do is, of course, change our policies around. Uh, we go from Expansionist to Isolationist because it is just better. And we're also going to change up our ship design. We're going to strip down our corvettes and take the alloys from them. We're going to immediately sell these alloys because uh, we really do need minerals early on. And the only way we're going to get mass amounts of minerals is by buying them. So what we're going to do is sell one little bit of alloys per day until we have sold all of our alloys. Now we're going to set up a monthly trade deal to buy 52 minerals per month and sell off some of our excess food production. All right. On our planet, what we're going to want to go for is as many research labs as plausible. Uh, we can't just gun for extra research labs and building slots because our population simply grows too fast. So instead, we're going to have to alternate research labs and resource districts. What I usually like to go for is a research lab, generator, research lab, generator, building slot, research lab, generator. It's going to make sure that your economy is sustainable and you don't have massive unemployment issues. Also, if you can get your hands on an architectural interest governor early on, I definitely would recommend doing that. It's very important to give your population jobs as quickly as possible, otherwise you will get overwhelmed. Getting that reduction to building cost and that extra build speed is really, really helpful. Otherwise, we're going to start out the game as we normally would. We're going to want to try to get our two guaranteed habitables as quickly as possible, colonize them, and set up clone vats on them. We don't really want to expand too much because expansion is influence and alloys, and those resources can be spent on attacking other empires later on. As far as our traditions go, we're going to want to go for prosperity as quickly as possible. You see, in 3.1, Prosperity has actually been buffed, uh, and the finisher, as you can see here, is amazing. Plus 5% resources from all jobs, and plus 5 stability. That is really crazy, and all the other bonuses from it are still going to be really great for this empire. So let's go for that, and try to finish it as early as possible. Ooh, Mysterious Ruins. That means we got the Zeroni event chain, which means a lot of free resources. We're definitely going to want to take that system as early as possible. Uh, I'm actually going to stop expanding towards here and go for the Zero above all else. 
about three years in, you're going to start noticing that the growth from your clone bats is not going to be as extreme as earlier. Uh, clone bats actually produce less growth the more they are filled up, and uh, I actually have a table on screen right now to show you what sort of growth you can expect. Oh, there we go, debated origin. This actually kicks off the event chain for clone armies, and it kicks it off in a very negative way. You actually get decreased happiness and unity from jobs, which isn't all too bad, uh, but you have to keep in mind that, yeah, your populace isn't happy about the fact that they're not actually a normal species. To progress through the event chain, you're going to have to complete an archaeological event chain and some special projects later on. We're going to make sure to uh, get a scientist on this as quickly as possible, because the earlier we can get it, the better. Alright, lost history. We have completed the first stage of the archaeological site, and now there's another stage, which is going to be quite difficult. Alright, we got our first colony set up, and we're going to have to build an ancient clone vet as soon as possible. If we don't, our population is just going to die off, and uh, we're going to have to recolonize, which we certainly don't want. So when you're colonizing, make sure to have some minerals spare, because uh, you definitely want to get on it as quickly as possible. As far as planet specialization goes, we're going to want to make our bigger colony our alloy planet, and our other colony our mineral slash energy planet, because we certainly are going to need a lot of raw resources to fund our war machine. Our capital in the meantime is just going to be our research planet. The more tech, the better. Ooh, we actually gained psionic theory from uh, the Zeroni. That's going to make things a bit easier. Ooh, mushrooms. Hmm. If we wanted to, we can get another species out of this and just skip the entire step of uh, conquering other planets. Or we can just eat them. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, for a succession perk, let's go for tech ascendancy. More tech equals gooder. That asteroid blast door. Okay, we're definitely going to want to go for that. In case you guys aren't aware, Asteroid Blast Door gives you 50 to 100 minor artifacts, which amounts to about, I don't know, 25 to 50,000 energy credits. That is a nice cash boost, and we're definitely going to want to go for that. <laughs> also, look at that. 30 pop assembly per month. As I mentioned before, if you have very few pops on a colony after year 10, your growth is going to be insane. We've actually built two ancient clone bats on our alloy world because we are going to want to have this planet be a little bit bigger. Uh, jobs are going to be a slight concern, but I think we'll handle it. Alright, let's see here. We have finished our homeworld excavation, and now we're going to get some more events relating to our origin. Alright, our history. News of the excavation findings proving that our species was once a primitive people on Prothoria is beginning to spread. It is difficult to deny the obvious conclusion. Genetically modifying a primitive species such as our forebears, a species already suited for wage war, serves a specific purpose. Our creators remade us to die for their cause. They uplifted us to fulfill their needs, never to prosper on our own terms. Is this really the history we want for our people? There's ample time to rewrite our past. Here, you have two choices. Either you lie about your origins and uh, get a brief bonus to your unity and happiness, or you face reality and get a longer-term bonus to your unity and happiness. Statistically speaking, lying to your people is less efficient than telling the truth. So we're going to tell the truth. And there you have it. Telling the truth paid off. We get plus 10% unity from jobs and plus 10% happiness for 10 years. If we were to lie, uh, we'd get a bigger bonus for 3-7 to seven years, but yeah, all lies must come to an end. Ooh, there we go. Clone Fertility. This project doesn't actually give you anything, but it does allow you to make a choice between potential or fertility. There we go, genetic crossroads. Either we let our pops reproduce, or we make them even better. Now, we are going to be going with Clone Potential, but let me quickly show you what happens when you go for Clone Fertility. You get 2,000 Alloys, 100 Crystals, and 100 Nanites. That chunk of resources can be potentially used towards early war, but generally, if you're going for Clone Fertility, you're going for it just to make sure your pops can reproduce. Your Clone Bats are going to get destroyed, and instead, your population will grow as normal. Uh, 
I would generally not recommend going for this path unless you're in a cluster that is blocked off by a fallen empire or something, or you just have too many planets in your nearby space to just let go of them. You should also keep in mind that if you go for clone fertility, your clones are going to be nerfed. Instead of plus 25% to ship fire rate, you're going to get plus 15% on your admirals. And your pops are going to be a little bit less loyal and a little bit less damaging as armies. However, we are bringers of death, not life, and so we will go with clone potential. Fullest potential. Why should we deny the strength we have been given? We need not love the creators to recognize their wisdom in choosing us. The ancient clone vats too are a powerful gift. It is better to embrace our strength. And with the first batch of Shroom completed, we are stronger than ever before. Our perfected species shall prosper. Now, uh, you will notice, we got some habitability. <laughs> On top of that, as I've mentioned before, we get crazy bonuses to our population. Compared to our original clone army trait, we get plus 20% habitability, plus 40% ruler pop output, plus 25% specialist pop output, plus 25% army damage, and health. Those are some pretty amazing stats, and when you take a look at the Admirals, they're just completely busted. Look at that, plus 35% ship fire rate, and minus 35% ship upkeep. With a fleet lodger station and a docked fleet, we can achieve minus 70% to ship upkeep, which is honestly pretty crazy. We can have a fleet that is three times that of an enemy, and still pay the same upkeep. And yeah, with that specialist pop output, our alloy production is off the charts. It is comparable to something like Void Dwellers or Necrophage, except we also get crazy bonuses to our fleets. So when it comes to fleet power, this is definitely a very competitive origin. And there we go, Asteroid Blast Door. Easiest 25,000 energy of my life. Uh, we're also nearly capped on alloys at this point, which is a bit of an issue. We'll probably start building our fleets soon enough. Speaking of fleets, we just finished Supremacy, and now we can go for Mind Over Matter. Awesome. Alright, here's that Empire we've discovered. They seem to be an advanced start considering how many planets they have. I guess it's just going to be extra satisfying to conquer them, eh? Alrighty, it is now year 31, and we're sitting at, you know, a respectable 17,500 fleet power. Uh, once all these ships are upgraded and the reinforcements arrive, we're going to have more like 22,000 fleet power, which is pretty decent. We're going to spam out some clone armies, which, by the way, is a nice touch. <laughs> we are the clone army origin, and we have access to the clone army technology. All right, now that our uh, 28k fleet is at the border, we can finally go ahead and attack these guys. As you might expect, the enemy doesn't stand a chance. What are they doing? Trying to sneak by? Nope, not happening. And with that, these guys are completely annihilated. Now all we have to do is do a little bit of cleanup, and... Oh, actually these guys surrendered. <laughs> Lamau. So yeah, this is what seems to be an advanced start Grand Admiral AI that has just fallen like a sack of taters. Now that we have conquered this empire, we're going to wait 10 years, integrate them, and make them part of our empire. In the meantime, we're going to wage campaigns across the galaxy, because, let's be honest, at this point you can't really compete with 30,000 fleet power. All in all, clone armies is a very, very powerful origin, and with this strategy, you can start out extremely strong. You can take it from here however you want. But anyways, that's going to do it for today. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys later, possibly in a stream, since 3.1 is out, and I'll be streaming more often. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, and of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.